So in previous sessions, we talked about ordinary shares. Now we can discuss preference shares or preferred stock. Preference shares are a separate class of shares that typically has priority over ordinary shares in dividend distributions and in distribution of assets in case of liquidation. Preference shares usually have a stated dividend rate that is expressed as a percentage of their par value. They normally do not have voting rights. There are several reasons why corporations issue preferred stock. Corporations may issue preferred stock to raise the needed capital without sacrificing control, because usually preferred stock do not have voting rights. Issuing preferred stock is a way to boost return to ordinary shareholders through financial leverage. If the return on utilizing the preferred stockholders' money is higher than the stated dividend in the preference shares, then usually the extra return will go to the ordinary shareholders' pocket. So in this way, through financial leverage, the shareholders, I mean the ordinary shareholders, do not need to make any additional investment, but they can earn an extra return. Issuing preference shares is also a way to raise ownership capital when the ordinary share is perceived as too risky or has a lower than expected return. So they are not quite attractive. Okay, so that's why the corporations attract capital by issuing preference shares. So the accounting for issuance of preference shares is basically the same as ordinary shares. If a company has two classes of shares, ordinary and preference shares, then the account names of share capital and share premium must be identified separately for each class. So for example, share capital ordinary and share capital preference are two separate accounts in the accounting system. To the investors, the preference shares are more attractive if they can enjoy more dividends above the stated dividend rate. Some preferred stock has this feature. We call them participating preference shares. This participation feature will only apply after the ordinary shareholders receive dividends equal to the preferred stock dividend percentage. But the normal case is the non-participating preference shares. The preference dividends are limited to a maximum amount each year. And this maximum amount is usually the stated dividend rate. Another special feature for preference shares is cumulative or non-cumulative. Cumulative preference shareholders have the rights to get both the current as well as all prior periods unpaid dividends before the corporation can distribute any dividends to the ordinary shareholders. When the preference shares are cumulative and the directors do not declare a dividend to the preferred stockholders, then the unpaid dividend is called a dividend in arrears and must be disclosed in the financial statements. Most preference shares are cumulative. Non-cumulative preferred stockholders have no rights to prior periods unpaid dividends. Maybe we can take a look on this example to understand the concepts here. This company has both ordinary shares and preference shares. The directors did not declare a dividend in 2010. In 2011, the directors declared and paid cash dividends of 42,000 in total. So let's see how this dividend is distributed when the preference share are cumulative and when they are non-cumulative. If the preference shares are non-cumulative, then the preferred stockholders do not have the rights to the missed dividends in 2010. However, 
the get first distribution of the dividends declared in 2011. The dividend for the preference shares in 2011 is calculated as follows. $100 per value times 9% times 1,000 shares equals $9,000. Since 42,000 dividends were declared in 2011, the preferred stockholders would receive the first 9,000 and the remaining 33,000 will be divided among the common stockholders. If the preferred shares are cumulative, the preferred stockholders will have the rights to get the one-year dividends in arrears in 2010, in addition to the dividends in 2011. The preferred stockholders first get a distribution of 9,000 for the dividends in arrears in 2010, and then they get another 9,000 for the dividends in 2011. Since 42,000 dividends were declared in total, the preferred stockholders would receive the first 18,000, and the remaining 24,000 would be divided among the common stockholders. So here comes to the end of session three. Now you can try the concept quiz to test your understanding in this session. <laughs>